If you are watching this video, it's because you are interested in doing whatever you can to maximize the chances for having a healthy baby. There are many different reasons why babies could be born with medical problems. The one I am going to discuss today is genetic mutations. It is estimated that three to four out of every thousand babies are born with a genetic disease. In the United States, that means approximately 13,200 babies are born with a genetic disorder every year. That's 30 seven every day. With current technology, many of these may be preventable. Want to learn more? Stay tuned. All living beings carry genetic information inside their cells. In humans, most cells have a nucleus where the genetic information is stored in structures called chromosomes. Normal, healthy human beings have 23 pairs of chromosomes. 23 chromosomes were inherited from the provider of the egg and 23 from the provider of the sperm. The chromosomes are actually long strands of DNA which are twisted and compressed so they can fit inside the nucleus. These strands of DNA are divided into sections which have various functions. The sections that produce proteins are called genes. Human beings have about 30,000 genes. The smallest chromosome has about 200 genes. The largest has over 3,000. Mutations are errors in the genes which can affect their function. In some cases, a mutation may reduce the function of the gene a little bit. In other cases, it can completely stop the gene function. There are exceptions but in most cases, a person has two copies of each gene, one which came from the sperm and one which came from the egg. A mutation is said to be dominant if only one copy is enough to produce a disease. If two mutations are needed, one from each parent, then it is called a recessive disease. A person can acquire a genetic disease in one of two ways. Most commonly, you inherit a genetic mutation from your parents. For example, if each of your parents carries a mutation for a recessive disease, half of their sperm and half of their eggs will also carry that mutation. If a sperm and egg, which are both carriers for the same mutation, produce an embryo, that results in an affected child. Less commonly, a new mutation can arise when the egg or sperm is being made. Today, there are a number of commercial laboratories that offer testing to people to look at whether they are carriers for genetic mutations. There are many differences in the tests that these labs offer, and some labs may offer several different types of tests. Some may look at just a few genetic diseases. Others may look at hundreds of genetic diseases. Most of these genetic panels look for recessive diseases, but some may also offer tests for dominant diseases. Some are generic, meaning they would be useful for anybody. Some are targeted which might be useful to certain groups of people. For example, people who have a strong family history of cancer or those that know of a specific genetic disease that runs in their family. If you are interested in knowing whether you and your partner are carriers for genetic mutations, you could have blood drawn at your doctor's office or in some cases you could just take some cells from the inside of your cheek with a swab. This test is sent to the lab. Results are usually available in a couple of weeks. What are some of the possible results you might encounter? First, the results might say that no mutations were detected. That's good, but remember that you might still have mutations in genes that weren't on the panel. It's also possible to have an unknown mutation in a gene that was tested. This is known as residual risk. Here's an example. In white people, one of the most common genetic mutations is for the disease cystic fibrosis. On average, there's a 1 in 25 chance that you could carry a mutation for cystic fibrosis. After completing the carrier screening test, the chance you might still have a mutation, one that was not detected, might be say 1 in 3,000. So the chance that you're a carrier is much lower but it is never zero. This is a very important concept. Genetic carrier screening can determine that you are low risk for being a carrier, but can never say that your risk is zero. Another possible result is that you are found to be a carrier for one or more mutations. Well, what should you do in that case? I recommend first that you have a consultation with a licensed genetic counselor or a physician who is a geneticist. There are two reasons for this. First, some genetic diseases, even those that are 
obsessive might still produce some symptoms in a carrier. These are known as manifesting carriers. It is important to learn whether there are any health issues that could affect you, even if you seem healthy right now. Second, it is important to learn about what the implications are for a child if your partner is also a carrier and a child inherits both of your mutations. Have your partner complete carrier screening if they have not already done so. If you are both known carriers of a genetic disease, it may be possible to reduce your risk of having a child with this particular genetic disease by having your embryos tested during IVF. This type of embryo testing is known as PGTM. PGTM can be complicated and requires preparation ahead of time and often genetic material from other family members. These days, many fertility centers may require their patients to have genetic carrier screening or sign a waiver refusing it. You may even be asked to do this if in the past you had genetic carrier screening, but the panel tested for fewer genetic diseases than are available with a different panel today. Infertility TV is your most trusted source for accurate information on infertility and miscarriage. If you are not a subscriber yet, hit the subscribe button right now. A new episode is released every week. Don't miss any episodes. You can also check us out on our website, ivf1.com, where you can become a patient.